All right, guys, so we're on to the next day. We're going to be starting to uh, tack this in, like I mentioned in the last video. But first, we are going to address the first few comments that were left on my last video. Starting from the the first guy, we have Fernie Ellis one He just left some emojis, and then he said, I like how you take your time to do the work 100. Yes, thank you very much. I try to take as much pride as these jobs as I did on my own, so I want all these jobs to be... Like you said, 100. So thanks a lot for that. Uh, Brian Allen, he just posted a timeline and then a um, link. But I'm not going to click that because seems sus. Then we have Rafael Sanchez. Hey, bro, great fabrication. Love the hard work and dedication. Love the videos. I was wondering if you can talk about your mistakes like when you first started doing custom fabrication. That way we can learn from it. I appreciate your help and knowledge. God bless. One of the main things that um, I guess the mistakes that I made was the reason also because I didn't have any experience is I made multiple mistakes in the stage when I was building the even the bench to put the truck on when I started measuring everything out. Sometimes some days I would uh, rush myself and I would make it uh, not as ideal as it should be. Some of my measurements were a little bit off. I would have to cut the tax back off, re-weld it, remeasure it. And then I didn't have a game plan. Again, because this isn't something that I haven't done before. So for example, uh, if you guys can go back to my old frame. So this was the way I did my uh, the frame initially. I z the front to match the new frame. The, from here, from the firewall forward was my original frame. I just z it. And then from here where the firewall would be, I started my own frame, just kicked it up in the back right before the axle and then just left it straight. Now, one thing that, um, one mistake that I did make is the same reason, I guess, because my bench was not uh, perfect and square. My frame also ended up not being perfect and square, but just in the back for some reason. So that was one mistake. And then, so I went, ended up having to go back Left the front the same, but in the back, I angled it just a little bit less. Did another kick up right there over the axle and then came back down. And the rear half, I did it like six inches higher than the where the cab would be. That way the back wouldn't, wouldn't rub. So the biggest mistakes I did was not taking my time measuring and squaring everything and not having a good game plan. So even on this, just like how I did uh, the templates, First, I did one with cardboard, fine-tuned it with that. That I transferred to that poster board. Even that I still fine-tuned. I transferred it to the metal, still made the metal just a little bit bigger, and then test-fitted that slowly, grinding little by little, because once you grind too much of this, then you're gonna have to start over. So just taking your time, measuring everything, that is the one best advice that I could give, is just taking your time and measuring multiple times. So going next, Librado Diaz, nice work. Hope to get work done by you when I get my truck. We'll look forward to it. If you do end up getting a truck and you want me to work for me, just hit me up and we'll work something out. Global Trucking Society. Saludos de 559 in Madera, California. Very nice job. You do, you do it. It takes a lot more time with the camera off. But other than that, A1 work you do, 100. Yeah, that's the one thing that slows me down is... Uh, changing trying to change up camera angles trying to also make it interesting for you guys But yeah, once the camera's off this work definitely can go a lot quicker But I'm here trying to uh, show you guys every step of the process. So so far. I hope you guys are enjoying it P Corona Good work. Keep it coming Bone shaker garage great video. I have been a subscriber since you started your own project. I learned something every video I appreciate it. Thank you. I try to be as informative as I, as I can. I'm not the best at explaining things, as you can probably see throughout my whole videos. Um, I stutter a lot. I repeat myself a lot. So I'm doing my best. Hopefully, you, I help you guys out in some way. But yeah, that's what I'm here for. I'm trying to show you guys how to build your own projects, if possible. Michael Cantu, try and find a client who wants to lift, please. Great work. I haven't found anybody yet that wants, well, actually I did. I had a client that wanted, uh, I was gonna get two trucks. I was gonna transfer the drop kit 
from one truck to the other and then the lift kit from one truck to the other. But being that I'm also limited in space, that lift on the truck was pretty high. So one, I couldn't fit it in my garage. Two, I would have to have both projects outside in order to transfer everything. And three, I don't have the driveway space to have both of those trucks and all three of our personal vehicles at the house uh, because we are not allowed to uh, park out in the street due to our HOA. So that was one I could have done, but unfortunately we had to pass on it. But in the future, if we ever just get one truck that wants to lift, that might be something we can do. Ginger rides. Do you have any experience with leaf spring losing their rigidity over time? I get really bad axle wrap just by pushing my truck in park. The differential rolls so bad. Now, I don't have any personal experience with that, but I would say check and see if possibly somebody has taken out a, the overload spring in it. Maybe that could be a problem or you're just leaf springs are pretty worn out. I would probably recommend either going to a junkyard and swapping out to another set of original axles. Or maybe another thing you could do is put those uh, traction bars to keep it from having so much axle wrap. So those are the three things you could do uh, to kind of fix that. But I have not had any experience with those personally. Big John drags. Get yourself some Ram board. It's the best thing for templating. Lowe's and Home Depot sell it. Come in 100 foot rolls. So your templating cardboard is never too small. Uh, cool. I appreciate the info. I will definitely look into that. And that will be the next thing I get after we run out of the small poster board that I have. El Pulpo Builds. El Pulpo Builds. Just like someone said from above, I love how you take your time on projects. Shows your quality of, quality of work you put into these builds. Definitely try to put as much as I can of quality uh, into every build. But I'm, like I said, I'm just a beginner fabricator. I'm not saying I'm the best, so I'm still learning new things just like you guys. So that's that. Manuel Cortes Luna, bro, you are so underrated. Clean ass work, already anxious to see the next video. I appreciate it. I try to upload, I'm trying to upload as much as I can, but there's just some days that life gets in the way, house stuff that, that I gotta do around the house, or I have to be uh, with the kids. But whenever I can, I try to upload, but I'm just trying to up the pace from last year and just bring you guys more videos. So um, I'm working on it. So just make sure you turn on those post notifications because there's no telling when I upload. I don't have a set schedule. It's just whenever I have time to actually work on the cars. So turn on your post notifications and you will definitely know when, and you will definitely be the first one to know when I upload a new video. Jose Gama, buen trabajo. Thank you, sir. Little Mario 1994. I like the template he used for the for under the fender of the truck. Modelo. Yeah. That's only Modelo, fool. That's all. You can't go wrong with Modelo. And then Blake Busio. Hey, bro. Where do you get those tubs? I've been looking for some. The tubs that I got are actually just trailer fenders. Um, I'll put the website right here of where I got it from. But there's an actual uh, tub kit that you can get from this website right here. CompleteAirRide.com. That they sell, I believe, the tub with this sheet metal, if I'm not mistaken. I'll post some pictures here, but I'm pretty sure they sell it like that. <clears throat> also, I believe uh, Reckless Suspension Works sells a tub kit like that. Even the firewall kit. They're kind of pricey, but it does save you a lot of the time by having it all pre-cut. So those are the three places that I know you can get it from. So the Trailer Fender website, CompleteAirRide.com, and Reckless Suspension Works. So those are three places you can get those. So that's going to be it for the comments for this video. It's been only been up for a couple hours. So this is already a really long intro with the comments. So let's get to grinding on this and get to welding or tacking this in. So let's get started.
All right, well, that one is nice and tucked in. We're ready to go on that. <clears throat> now, the next piece I'm going to be working on, now we get to turn it around and start working on the template that's going to go on the inside up against in here. So that I'm going to set up my uh, piece of wood over here again, my makeshift table, start making my cuts of the poster board, and then we'll start pre-fitting those again, break out some more sheet metal, start cutting those out, and we'll start working on the inside and get that covered up. So we're going to set that on a time lapse because, because that one is going to take quite some time. So here we go again. Alright, we got these nicely cut out. Uh, I have a feeling that they're not going to be as perfect as I want to, uh, as I wanted them, but uh, we'll just work with what we got and see if it fits really good. If it doesn't, we'll just cut out another one. Ain't no shame in that. So, uh, let me go ahead and I might have, I'm going to try to figure out a way to bend these to kind of go into the same uh, curvature as the wheel opening. <coughs> and we'll and we'll get to start mounting these uh, inner parts in. So let's go ahead and set this up and get the test fitting. there we have it i got it pretty much taped up and kind of clamped right there where i needed to 
So right here, I'll have to do a little bit of cutting to kind of line that up. I need to cut a little bit off of the edge on the outside, right from here to here, so we can set this corner, this area right here, a little bit more flat. Same thing right here. This area needs to be ground down a little bit to bring that down a little bit. That'll just close this gap right here. So that's good right there. And then over here, same thing. I'll have to grind this inside out to kind of close that gap a little bit. And then I'll mark one of them right on the line right there and then just join them right there together. But other than that, I think it's coming out pretty good. I don't like this in here. Uh, what I mean by that is I don't want water to sit in there and to creep down in there. So what I'm going to do is kind of make like a little cut in there. I've already made it on the template. But kind of what I wanted to do. Let's see if I can find that rear section. Was it this one? Yeah. So kind of like that. This was this piece right here. So somewhere right in there, I'm going to cut this section out. Kind of make like a little hole, but you won't be able to see it because it'll be hidden behind the uh, lip right here. But that'll be kind of like a little drain channel. So when water does splash up in here, it does drain down in here. And it'll just drain out the regular holes down here at the bottom of the fender. Just to prevent water from accumulating in spots you don't want it to. So that'll be a little drain channel right there. And that's pretty much it. Um, I'm going to call it a night though because I got to get inside to put the kids to bed. But... This will be almost ready to start tacking in tomorrow. So, all right guys, so we're back at it again on another day with the inner fender tubs. But before we do that, I wanna address the Pioneer Radio giveaway winners. I went live on my Instagram yesterday and these are our winners. Johnny Boy 454 won sixth place. Arturo Perez won fifth and second place. Oscar Reyes won fourth place and Miguel Zambrano won third place, and then Big Pops won the Pioneer Double Din Radio. I already messaged him. He already, he doesn't need a Double Din kit, so he's all good to go. Everybody has been paid. Thank you to everybody who entered and supported the channel. Now we're actually going to be doing a second giveaway. Again, the Pioneer Double Din Radio is going to be up for grabs with a dash kit if you need one. Second place again will be winning $100. Third through sixth place will now be winning $50 each. Now, in order to enter, you go to elgallobuilt.bigcartel.com, purchase the new El Gallo Built lanyard, and that will be one entry towards winning the Pioneer Radio giveaway. So make sure you hit the link in the description below and get yourself one of the new lanyards so we can make the second giveaway a success. I'll eventually work my way up to doing bigger and better prizes. I'm not going to end up doing radios all the time. So be patient with me. Let's continue and make this channel grow, do bigger and better giveaways, and I will help you guys out. Let me know in the comments below what you would like to see for the next giveaway. I know a lot of people's been doing the PlayStations and the Apple Watches, etc. So let me know what you guys would like to see and we will make sure to have that in the next giveaway. So again, thank you guys for supporting the channel and entering into our giveaways. And now without further ado, let's continue on this inner tub build.
All right, guys, so here we have it. I'm not gonna call it perfect, but it's okay. I did grind uh, some spots a little bit too far open, but it's not too bad. It's, it can still be filled in with some, some weld, but I was originally gonna have this piece be touching the outside of the fender for rigidity, but I kind of went back on that and instead left a little bit of a gap, but this gap is still gonna be filled in with some seam sealer, but the seam sealer will have a little bit more flex to it. So I got that even all the way across. And if you can see in there, there's my little drainage hole for any water that accumulates in here. Cause I'm not gonna be able to get the seam sealer all the way up in there perfectly. So I just left a little hole right there. So the water will drain, nothing's gonna splash back up on, behind the fender or behind the uh, door, I mean, and it really won't come out of here. It'll just accumulate down here and just drain out the bottom of the fender. So if anything, I'll drill a hole down here because where he lives, he does have a lot of pine needles that sit on the truck. So it was soft stuff back here. So if anything, like I said, we'll drill another hole right there for drainage. But I think now I'm to the point where I can now test fit it on the truck and make sure mainly I want to see if this is going to fit right because it did come out a little bit farther out than I wanted to. So I want to see if this is going to fit where I want it. And then the other issue I think I'm going to have is this up here because I remember I was going to cut it a little bit shorter because I don't know if I'll be able to get it in behind the fender or I'm sorry behind the bumper so without further ado let's go ahead and start test fitting this and see what else we need to we need to grind down because I to be honest I want kind of want to go ahead and see it also on the truck and see how it came out so let's go ahead and try that out like I suspected the fender up here in the front is not going to slide behind uh, as well as I wanted to so I'm going to loosen up that bumper so I can get it to fit a little bit better so instead we're going to move you guys over here you can see what we're going to do so I'm just going to pull back the bumper a little bit so I can slip the bumper in there for the finger. So I was able to slip the bumper on, but as you saw, I needed to take the bumper off in order to slide the fender in. Well, that's because the way I have it in here, hold on, let me turn my flash on. All right, so the way I did it in here, see how I slipped it between each little piece? Because I wanted it to keep water from going up in there. So it fits good, it looks nice, but Still needs a little bit more trimming and I feel like uh, it's going to be a little bit more of a pain to get the bumper on and off. But really how often are you going to take the bumper off? But regardless, I think I'm going to go ahead and go ahead and since I'm already here, I'm going to go ahead and mark this where I need to. 
and start trimming a little bit more off of the of the uh, this outer piece right here just to make it easier for the bumper removal and installation and then however back here we actually came out pretty good it's sitting over that lip that I wanted because there's a pinch wheel that goes like right here so it's sitting good right there slips behind this like I wanted to and looks pretty darn good if I do say so myself but I mean it's all right I'm like like I said I'm not claiming to be perfect or the best but I still try so there's pretty much everything in the front slips behind the radiator support and then back there goes all the way towards the back I kind of want to cover that hole though but I don't know because the hinge actually goes there. I forgot about that. So next thing I got to test fit is going to be the hood and the hinge and make sure that hinge is not going to hit the tub right here. But other than that, now I think what I'm going to do is take the bumper off and start cutting that front lip to make it easier to take the bumper on and off. So that'll be it. And I think this side will pretty much be done, at least in the mock-up and we'll be ready to move on to the passenger side so let me get to marking this and cutting trimming it a little bit more and then we'll finish this up We got the the bumper nicely curved. I trimmed it out and it fits, it slides back into the uh, sp into its spot a lot better than before because before it, this edge was hitting the, that inner piece of the tub. But look, even when you're looking at it from afar, from over here, you can barely tell just only like in this one spot and up there where I made those cuts to slip in between each section of the bumper. And Unless you go in here, it's still, well, hold on, gotta turn my flight. All right, there we go. Now, in here, you can see it still has a little bit of room in there. Nothing's gonna rub and everything. And it fits flawlessly. And I think that's gonna do it right there because like I said, I was able to fit the bumper in there really good. So I think we are gonna call it done on this side and we will be good to go. And now, now we'll begin all over again and starting on the passenger side. All right, but I think that's going to end it for today, guys. I, we made pretty good progress on this driver's side tub. It's a lot of tedious work. takes time, but we'll get there. We'll get it all done eventually. But that's going to end it for today, guys. And I'll get this video uploaded for you guys. Thank you for watching. Again, make sure you hit the link in the description to enter the next giveaway. And I will see you guys on the next one.